Uh, joining me in studio is the Deputy Governor of Nairobi County, Jonathan Mweke. Good morning. Morning, so good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, so let's get started with what you launched yesterday. Yes. Uh, talk to us about going cashless on parking fee in the city. Yeah, um, you know, as a county, we said we're going to improve service delivery. Right. And we wanted to do that uh, with the backbone of ICT. So we started a very ambitious program mm -hmm. called uh, Nairobi County ICT Transformation Program, which just means we're going to transform our service delivery, mm -hmm. make it efficient using IT. Uh, we've done a few products already. Parking that we launched uh, yesterday as a pilot is actually about the fifth revenue stream that we've done since we started uh, sometime in June. Right. Uh, and, and why we took parking at the time we did is because it touches so many of our citizens, mm -hmm. motorists who, who park in the, in the streets of Nairobi every day, pretty right. much. Um, what happened with, uh, with, with, with that first is we went and did a survey from uh, random motorists and just to kind of figure out where the pain areas were. Mm -hmm. And we found out a few things. Number one is uh, motorists who come to park, especially in the morning when they're running to work or they're going for meetings, uh, they don't find our parking attendants on time mm -hmm. all the time. Uh, so they end up waiting in their cars uh, for somebody to come and write them a ticket. A ticket. Yeah, and that was very inconveniencing to them. Uh, number two, they said uh, if they don't find somebody and they have to run somewhere, then they run and they leave money with either a watchman uh, or with the newspaper vendor. Mm -hmm. uh, and what happens with that is if they don't pay, they come and find they've been clamped. And then uh, inconveniencing again, uh, our clamping uh, fines were not very efficient, so you have to come and look for a city hall office, either in one of uh, the satellite offices, or you have to come all the way to the city center to pay. So that was very inconveniencing. Uh, for the people who do seasonal tickets, was the lines mm. at the banking hall that people have to fill in, uh, fair, uh, line up every end of the month right. to, to pay. So it was very, very inconveniencing. And that's why we came up and hatched this and said, listen, let's go cashless so that one, we're efficient. Uh, two, it's at the convenience of our motorists. And then three, um, you know, it also helps us with our revenue collection system. Okay. So that, you know, you cut off the, the, the cash human element and you're able to increase revenues and, and seal some of the loopholes. Yeah. So we started developing this system that we piloted yesterday at Hale Silasi Avenue. So how long will the pilot run for? Uh, the pilot is for this week before we begin to extend it to all of Nairobi. So we are hoping uh, by next Monday, 1st of September, mm -hmm. we've extended it to, to all streets. So how area. exactly does it work? Uh, there's different channels mm -hmm. that you can, you can use. The key to this is convenience. Yeah? Uh, yes. You also get away from the problem of looking for change uh, because everything is electronic. Right. Uh, so the, the, the easiest way to do it is we have a USSD code, just like you do when you're doing M-Pesa. Mm -hmm. And for the count, it's star 217 hash. And when you uh, type in star 217 hash, if you've registered before, it just takes you straight to a menu. If you've not registered, it asks you to register. Mm -hmm. So it can capture your, your, your details. Um, once you're registered and you have money in your, in, in your e-wallet, which you can transfer using M-Pesa, Airtel, Ucash, Orange Money, Visa, MasterCard, or through our website, uh, you just go through the menu. It asks you parking, daily, the size of the car, because you know depending on if you have a lorry, a bus, mm -hmm. a minivan, um, Some people could lie. A car. Yeah, well, there's an inspection part that I'll talk about. Okay. Yeah, right. um, or, or, uh, or, or a car, the rates are different. So you just choose what you want. The menu automatically brings uh, the money you're supposed to pay. Pay. Uh, you pay, and once you pay, it hits our, our system. So which means the people who used to wear yellow jackets, uh, who go around collecting parking on a daily basis yeah. here, parking fees, all they do now is do an inspection. And again, it's electronic. So they just walk the streets and they type in into their uh, device, which is also has a GPS, so it knows the location, the street where your car is. Right. And just type in your number plate. And then the system will tell you if, uh, will tell them if you have paid or you're not paid. All right. And if you have paid for a car while you're a lorry, I mean, they're physically there, they can see. Yes. And when that happens, then they send the information to the clamping guys 
who, who come and do who the enforcement. In. So what happens when this system breaks down? You've mentioned MPESA. We sometimes yes. have challenges. They'll send a message yes. and say for this period of time, you'll not mm. be able to transact. Yes. What happens? I'm in Nairobi. I want to pack. System is down. Yes. Um, that's why you have several different channels. Uh, it's, it's not just uh, the MPESA channel. We also have an agency network. Right now, we've partnered with Cooperative Bank. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know the Corp Kwajirani has almost 6,000 agents. So if you don't want to use your money electronically and you have cash, we'll also have agents that are on the streets. Now we have about maybe five or six agents just on Hale Silasi. Uh, so we have agents who are on the street and you just take them your money and they will uh, pay the parking for you on their system electronically. So for us it's still cashless because the money now goes directly into the agent's hands and the agents carry a float. Uh, just like how the M-Pesa or Airtel money agents, mm -hmm. uh, agents work. So if the Jumbo Pay system itself, which is what we are using, yes. uh, at the platform we are using for this electronic payment, if it goes down, uh, the company has put up a real-time redundant uh, disaster recovery system uh, somewhere a few kilometers from the city. Mm -hmm. So if the primary system goes down, uh, because there is real-time replication between the two systems, the secondary system picks up. So the citizen will never notice really there's been an, an outage. Yeah. And then once they have resolved the issue of their primary system, then the, the backup system fails back, uh, back to the primary system. And okay. it's all seamless, it's all automatic. But, but what prevents the same issue and challenge that has been there before, you know, corruption pretty much, with these people that are helping uh, on the ground, the same attendants are there, still deciding, okay, you're giving me Kidogo money, I'll sort you out, don't worry. Well, the attendants don't collect money. No, you have not given them money. They're not collecting money. Yes. But this person comes and they have not paid. Yes. But this guy says, yes, I have not paid, but I can hook you up with something. Yes. So that you do not uh, have me clumped. Yes. What happens? Uh, there's random enforcers who come around. Okay. Uh, typing in number plates of cars. So if somebody uh, has hooked you up, uh, somebody else will come behind them because they are random inspectors who check and they'll just type in the number plate of your car in their system mm -hmm. and it'll show you have not paid because if you're not paid it doesn't show in our system uh, so it's it's a very fail-proof kind of a kind, kind of a system because i'm also imagining this random people you're talking about are not randomly showing up after every three minutes so there still is some room for that to happen though perhaps not as much as before yes uh you can never really eliminate all the issues what you do is you continuously improve so that you reduce significantly okay. and so what we have done is we've put in a system that has a very clear <coughs> excuse me a very clear workflow on how uh, uh, on how the checks and balances are going to work mm. for example if you put in the number plate and we see that you have not paid automatically it puts your car on a clamping list so a whole different team that comes around and does the clamping will know that you have not paid and these people are notified automatically mm -hmm. and the location is given because the device we have uh, uses satellite uh, uh, location. So it has a GPS, global positioning system. So it's able to tell where you are. Mm. Uh, so if you've not paid, the enforcers just come immediately and they begin to clamp you. Okay. Uh, and when they clamp you, you can't be unclamped until again the system reads that you have paid the clamping fees. Mm. So it's a whole workflow that goes around to ensure that uh, people really just uh, pay for the service that we're giving them. That you're counting. giving them. Yeah. And you have our phone number scrolling on your screen. <coughs> Perhaps let's have that tag as uh, cashless uh, parking, going cashless on parking fees, mm. so that we are clear uh, for our viewers who are watching what we are going cashless on. Uh, but do call us and engage with us this morning with the Deputy uh, Governor of Nairobi County. He's in studio. If you're a resident of Nairobi County and the issues you'd want to raise with him or some clarification, um, this is a good platform. I'm sure he's ready and willing to Absolutely. talk to you. Absolutely. Um, but let's go back to the uh, question of revenue collection yes. as well. You um, hope to collect about what, five billion monthly is what I got is the target eventually when this entire system is rolled out for Nairobi from parking. Well, uh, we collect about two million, 2.2 million shillings. Right now, but what you hope to do right, with the new system? Right now. Uh, what we hope to do is we want to raise that to about three, uh, three, three, three million shillings, mm -hmm. uh, which will come to you know, um, right, right, uh, about uh, two hundred and uh, 
and 70 or so mm -hmm. uh, million shillings every month. Okay. Yeah. Because I was reading an article by one of the, the accountant <coughs> that's in charge of the parking, and the figures there were quite outstanding, outstanding, talking about so far the collection is 170 to 250 million shillings. So what I'm hearing from you is completely uh, downgraded from that figure. And that, um, you know, that the, what the figure that had been presented to the county assembly as the revenue that will be collected was 3.6 billion shillings which was then later revised upwards to five billion shillings but that the accountant said that uh, what would be realistic yeah. is uh, three billion shillings so yeah. what are we missing here no those are those those are not monthly okay. figures uh, definitely uh because if you look at uh, at, at, at three million a day and uh you're going for for, for the 30 days mm -hmm. then really you're getting around 90 100 million mark yeah now that is just for the daily parking uh we have seasonal parking that pushes that up uh, so right now we are around about uh, 120 130 million mm -hmm. right um we'll go probably um to 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 about 250 270 million mm -hmm. uh with this new system okay yeah so so with the efficiencies, uh, the loopholes, uh, getting the people who traditionally don't pay for the seasonal parking, which is mostly 80% the matatus, mm. a lot of them would not even terminate in the CBD. So they would escape uh, our network of enforcement. Yeah? Now with also our decentralization of services, we are taking enforcement to the ward level. So again, we have been able to see a rise uh, since we introduced this system, mm. um, right from about 9,000 matatus paying to about 12,000 matatus paying. So we went up another 30% on that. Okay. Uh, so the, the 5 billion figure is, is uh, I'm not quite off. sure where you got that figure from. I that's, will show you where I got it that, from. That's way up. <laughs> yeah. That's way up. <laughs> All right. Um, in terms of increasing that space as well, you have 12, is it, how many slots do you have, the parking slots? Yeah, we have about 12,100 12, uh, slots. 100 slots. Yes. And there's a huge uh, part of that that goes to the government agencies. And this account was also yes. talking about quite a number of, uh, a huge amount of money, uh, I think some 4 million shillings, yes. perhaps would have been collected if that was open to um, the public. So is there a plan to expand the spaces? Um, well, f first of all, with the government spaces, uh, they're supposed to pay parking just like anybody else. Okay. Right? Um, but now they have not been paying. They, they've not been paying and we have an issue, so it's something that we have brought up with the Senate uh, so that they can help us, uh, you know, lobby some of these government offices, government ministries, parastatals to pay for parking because they're enjoying that service. They expect us to, mm -hmm. to fix the roads that they're parking on. They expect us to have the security. They expect us to put street lights mm -hmm. on, on those roads. So really you need to pay for the service if the city is to progress uh, uh, with that. But what we are doing is uh, because of lack of parking with, within the city, mm -hmm. we have also tendered for uh, a modern parking structure right. to be built. And this is at the sunken car park, which is right uh, in front of the Aga Khan walk on Taifa Road. Mm -hmm. um, so we tendered for that last month. We're waiting for the bids to close so that we can get into a public-private partnership uh, with uh, an investor who would like to build uh, a parking, parking story there story. to kind of decongest the city and also increase the capacity for parking. And pretty much how this will work is uh, the investor will put up about 1,800 to 2,000 parking slots mm -hmm. and then will share revenue until they are able to, um, to recover their investment yes. and make their margin. Then that can revert back to us. We want to put up a very, very modern uh, parking structure. Once that is done, we look at all our other uh, private, uh, not private, but public off-street uh, parking slots. I think there are about 11 or so around the city mm. and we'll begin to roll that out once we are sure that the model works pretty well. So what are we looking at in terms of time frame for that to be rolled out? Um, the it's tenoring process will probably take another 60 or so days. Right. Once that is done, typically it will take a construction period of about 24 months. 24 months. So in about two or two. so years from now, we should have that, uh, that parking structure up. Back, back to the cashless, so how much are we paying with the jumbo pay system? How much will parking fee be with this system? Does it stand it's, it's as It's the same okay. uh, because we, we signed a, a finance act 
uh, which puts daily parking at 300 for the normal saloon cars within the CBD and, uh, and specific zones. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go out into the city like the Buruburus and so on, then it's 200 shillings. Yeah. So that remains, uh, that remains pretty much the same. What we are going to do once the system uh, stabilizes and we have everybody on cashless system, yes. uh, we are going to add another feature where we'll put timed parking. Yeah, I mean, uh, which, which will again be more convenient to motorists because you'll end up paying for, for, what, uh, for the amount of time you park for. Right now, if you just want to dash into a shop for five minutes, you still pay the same as somebody. Yes, 300 shillings, the yes. same as somebody who, who's jumping in, uh, who's going to be parking for, for, for the whole day, right. uh, seven to seven, 12 hours. So we want to change that to put timed parkings. So you know, like what we see at supermarkets. Exactly. Yeah. So if you park Almost, for an hour, you yeah. pay a rate for an hour. And, and we're hoping sometime probably next year we'll be able to switch the system to to, to meet at parking. Okay, yeah. I, I think that would be great. We have a caller and a stand online. Yeah. Um, Pastor Ken, you said? <coughs> ben, uh, sorry. Ben, good yeah. morning. Good, good morning, how are you, Sophia? I'm well, thank you for calling. Yeah. Go ahead with your contribution. Now, I have a few concerns with, uh, about the parking. Yes. Uh, number one, mm -hmm. uh, the taxes that are parked in town, tax the tax vehicles that are parked in town. Now, uh, they, they are causing a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. Most of them, they don't pay parking. They are double parking. Sorry, time. I'm just going to request... Wait, just hold on a minute, Ben. Can we have more volume uh, in studio, uh, kindly, with our team in studio? Okay, Daryl, let's have more volume on that. We can barely hear Ben. Ben, just one sec, as we have more volume, so we can hear you better. Go ahead. Now, uh, my concern is... Yes. Uh, the, 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 the tax vehicles... That, that are parked in town, right. uh, they, they are always double parking. They cannot allow you to park even if there is space. And uh, the, the second, they, 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 they are always conspiring with the, with, the, with the parking attendants. And I'm not very sure most of them they are paying for, for the parking. Number two, we have so many pickups that are, park, that, that are parking on the street. They are also conspiring with the, with the, with the, with the attendants of the, the parking. They don't pay the parking, and it's be really becoming a, a very big issue in town. Now, the, the issue about 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 the, the the system when it goes down. By the time you go pay at a, at the, at the agents that the deputy governor is talking about, he'll have already clamped your vehicle. What what what, what else? Uh, do they have? Uh, are they planning to have uh, some time which they can allow the the, the the vehicle owners to go and pay because. These guys, they, sometimes the, the attendants, they, they don't even reason at all. And they are really harassing motor, motorists up and down. So I think they need to, to deal with that because there is a lot of corruption going on on our streets about the parking. Right. I think that is my concern. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ben, uh, for those questions. Uh, uh, let's move on to Njuguna before we answer Ben. Njuguna, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for calling. Go ahead. No. no. Hello? Yes, we hear you, Njuguna. Yeah, my question is simple for the deputy governor. Mm -hmm. Why would one be required to pay for parking in the central business district, mm -hmm. then an hour later drives to Westland and be required to pay some more money for another ticket? And you are still in the, you, you know, within the boundaries of the Nairobi County. Why, why don't you pay one single ticket and, uh, you know, that will allow you to move around the city? Well, well, well put, Njuguna. Thank you for that question. Let's begin with Ben, uh, Deputy Governor. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Ben. Uh, that's, that's a good observation with the ta taxi, uh, taxi cabs yes. taking up a lot of parking in, uh, in, in the yeah, CBD. Quite many. Yes, and, 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 and that is true. Uh, but our current bylaws did not restrict uh, people from parking anywhere. So it was really a first come, first serve mm -hmm. uh, basis. So if you come and you find a parking, then you park and you, and you pay for the whole day. Right. Uh, now, that's an issue, and we've realized that. So we have put in a bill, uh, which we are calling the Taxi Cabs Bill. Uh, it's currently being drafted by our legal team, uh, which will go to the county assembly and make it law. And what this will do is it will regulate 
the way taxis and, and, and cabs operate within the CBD. Uh, there are several proposals. Uh, one of the proposals really is uh, they have to do metered parking, mm -hmm. so it makes it very punitive for them to just sit there, to sit there <laughs> for, for five, space. six hours yeah. taking the space because they'll have to pay for it. Right, uh, right now it's very cheap. It's 300, do 300 yeah. shillings, shillings a, yeah. a whole day. So um, one customer they get can pay for their parking. Mm -hmm. uh, two, we're going to be regulating uh, the way they pick and, 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 drop, um, and, and, and drop passengers. We are still uh, talking to the stakeholders, talking to the Taxi Cabs Association of Kenya, so that we can come up with regulations where the CBD and other areas are only for pickup and, and drop off. So if you need a taxi, you call one. In a few minutes, it comes and picks you up. So right. you don't have taxis taking up parking spots that are otherwise needed by motorists right. uh, just sitting down waiting for, for customers. So, uh, Pastor Ben, that is something that is, that is on the way. We are just drafting the law the law for that. Uh, that same regulation will also take care of, of issues like double parking and so on and so forth. Okay. So we're just creating county laws to be able to enforce this kind of order mm. within, uh, within, within our city. Right. Um, Another issue he raised <clears throat> is the question of in case the system is down, yes. uh, the time between you know, going then to have the whole situation uh, still sorted. Sometimes you know, those clumps are very hungry to clump somebody. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, that is one of the issues that we receive from motorists when we are doing our survey right. uh, and, and, uh, so that we can design a solution that will actually fix people's problems. And what used to happen before is you won't find a parking attendant. So while you are looking for one around the corner, somebody comes from the back and clamps your car, yeah. which is unfair clamping. Uh, and, and, and we agree with that. Now what we are saying is we are putting the control to pay for your parking in your hands. So you can pay on your mobile phone, uh, you can pay uh, by downloading. But uh, we're saying when that fails, app. the plan B is what? You, you talked about this certain yes. that around. Before you get to them, you've, uh, you've clamped already. Yes, but you see now you don't need to pay to the attendants anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You can be sitting in your house and pay for parking. You can be sitting in Mombasa and your friend in Nairobi calls you and says, I don't have money, I need to pay for parking. All you need is A, what zone are they in, and B, the license plate of their number. So it's the convenience we are bringing to the motorist saying, now listen, this is in your hands. You can pay for parking from wherever you are at your convenience. Yeah. So you don't have to wait for an attendant who is not there at the time you need them to be able to pay for your parking. Because you said when the system <coughs> is down, yes. that they will be sent, they will be, you are also working with the bank. Yes. Well, when the system is down, there's different many channels. Yes. Yeah? So let's say there's an M-Pesa failure. And so you can move your M-Pesa from your money from your M-Pesa to our system. Mm -hmm. Then there's, you can use Airtel money, you can use your Visa or credit card, mm -hmm. or you can go physically to an agent who will be on the streets to yeah, give so them So as you're looking for cash. that agent, I think that's where his question was coming from. Yes. When you're not able, the system is down, you're not able to do it yourself, the transaction, yes. and you need this agent then to come and help yes. that particular period of getting this person yes. to help you out. Yes. That, the clamping nowadays does not become immediate anymore. How the clamping works is you have to have been tagged by an inspector that you have not paid before the clamp has come. So before the clampers would come and check if you have a ticket. Mm -hmm. Now the clampers don't have the ability to come and check if you have a ticket. What happens if you have inspectors that go around inspecting to see if you have paid, right? Yes. Once they put in your license plate number and you see you have not paid, then it sends a message to a clamper but saying if, where if that clamper is. But if because you have not paid, because yes. you're looking for this other person to assist you to pay, yes. they will find you have not paid it's, and they it's will it's clamp not, you. It's not in that real time. That's why I'm trying to say the workflow that it takes. Okay. You have an inspector to come and inspect. Once they see that you have not paid, it sends a message to a clamper who then comes looking for you. So you have about a 20, 30 minute uh, So you lead better time. find that help in 20, yeah. 30 minutes. But and I mean, like I'm saying, in, in, in a street like right now in Hale Silasi, five. In, in five in a street that's about 100 meters. Mm -hmm. So in 20 meters, you have an attendant. Mm -hmm. You find that in a minute or two. So the whole issue of being clamped while you're looking for somebody it's just doesn't arise anymore. All right. Before yeah. we go on break, let's uh, address Njuguna's question. Yes. Uh, paying for parking in, the, in town, CBD, 
going to Westlands and having to pay all over again, you're still pretty much in the same uh, space. Yes. Yeah. Once you pay for parking, then it's valid all over Nairobi. You only get a difference where the parking rates are different. For example, within the city limits, parking is 300 shillings. If you're going out into the estates, it's 200 shillings. Mm -hmm. So if you paid 200 shillings while you're in the estate and then you come into the CBD, then you have an option in our menu to top up. So you top up the extra 100 shillings. But once you've paid 300 shillings within the CBD, then you can park anywhere in Nairobi and it's valid. And that's with the new so system. For that's now, people with the new get system. to pay exactly. double. So you don't have to go and buy another ticket okay. uh, 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 elsewhere. Elsewhere. Yeah. We're going to take a short break and uh, talk more uh, yes. about this system. And the traffic lights. We thought that life was going to change for Nairobi residents. Yes, we'll talk about There was that. millions of shillings that went into that yes, and the we'll surveillance as well. We'll talk about that and more. Stay with us right here on KTN. Yeah.